I mentioned earlier, we've seen um, amazing solidarity from Britain's faith communities with the plight of refugees. And in particular, we've seen a really big concerted campaign by the Jewish communities. And um, uh, Jonathan Sachs, former chief rabbi, was one of the first people calling on Britain to take um, unaccompanied child refugees. Um, And so it's the Jewish communities who have... Um, from following the experience of the the Holocaust and pogroms um, in the 19th and 20th century, who truly understand the plight of refugees today. So I'd like you, please, to give a very warm welcome to Rabbi Lee Wax, who is also one of the vice chairs of Stand Up to Racism. Thank you very much. probably can't see because I'm so short. (laughs) My big moment here. (laughs) That's my speech. (laughs) Friends, it's it's a great privilege to be speaking here this evening. Two newspaper quotes to start with. First, a headline. Refugees get jobs, Britons get dole. Second, from a newspaper article proposing that the dirty, destitute, diseased, verminous and criminal foreigner who dumps himself on our soil shall be forbidden to land. Well, you'd be forgiven for thinking I'm reading quotes from today's Daily Express. In fact, the headline dates from 1938, and the article was 1905. And they weren't talking about Syrian refugees, although they might just as well have been. They were talking about what the Sunday Express in 1938 described as a big influx of foreign Jews overrunning the country. And I don't know if you saw the ghastly headline in yesterday's Daily Express. I don't know what I've got against them today. (laughs) But yesterday they were running a front page which read, EU threat to family life. And the article said, I didn't buy it, I read it online, the article said that mothers were leading us out of Europe because of the damage that immigration causes to family life. Where do they find this stuff? (laughs) When my grandparents fled here in the early 1900s from Poland and Russia, they came with so many others who were fleeing persecution and starvation, and they came in fear. Here, thank God, they found refuge. They were able to painstakingly rebuild their lives. But they also found themselves hated again, attacked as aliens who were infesting England swamping whole areas once populated by English people, and that's a direct quote from the Bishop of Stepney in 1902, and as turning this country into the dumping ground for the scum of Europe. A popular anti-alien movement at the time, the British Brothers, said, this is England, not the dustbin of Russia and Austria. In the late 1930s, my husband's parents escaped to the UK from Nazi Europe. Separately, they met here. They each lost everything and almost everyone. They met here, they married here, they started again, and they actually did very well. But they lived with the grief and the emotional scars for the rest of their lives. Yet they always considered themselves the lucky ones. They were part of the 70,000 who were let in, Another half a million were not, and we know what happened to them. Because of racism, xenophobia, British immigration policy, and public opinion. Jewish refugees were diseased, apparently. They worked for less. They took our jobs. They were criminals. They milked the system. Just a few of the hate-filled attacks on Jews seeking refuge, seeking life. Together, here today, we recognize those words of hatred. And this time, they're about another people 
but it's the same words and it's the same dynamics. And it is sobering and it is shameful that we as a society are still saying them. My refugee grandparents and my in-laws were deeply patriotic, deeply grateful all their lives to the UK for saving their lives. So too all the Jews allowed in, some of whom are still alive today. Nearly all Jews in the UK today are refugees themselves or direct descendants from refugees. 70 years later, the Association for Jewish Refugees still exists, supporting the second and the third generations which have been affected by the cataclysmic loss of family and 1,000 years of life in Europe. So when Jews see refugees, we recognize them. We recognize the loss, we recognize the desperation, the fear and the displacement. The Bible teaches us no less than 36 times, do not oppress the stranger for you yourself was a stranger. You know the heart of the stranger, the Bible says. So we identify with the humanitarian crisis. We identify with the stranger who is hated and turned away. The Bible also teaches us not to stand idly by the blood of our neighbor, to take personal responsibility for wrongs that we witness, to speak out against just injustice and inhumanity. So from the Jewish community, our young people, our youth workers, were among the first to go to Calais last year, delivering emergency supplies. <laughs> our rabbi's human rights group, Tselem, of which I'm a member, and our chief rabbi, have begged the government to act with moral courage and urgently offer asylum to more people. Members of the Jewish community have offered to find, help find homes, jobs, food, clothing and education for more refugees. After all, we said, we know the heart of the stranger. Since last September, the Jewish community through World Jewish Relief, the people I got my t-shirt from, have now raised over £900,000 for Syrian refugees. It is remarkable. It's a lot of money, but a lot more is needed. Uh, it's actually the second wave of fundraising. There was a large appeal in 2013 which helped support Syrian refugees in Jordan. This £900,000 is being used to support humanitarian relief initiatives on the ground, mostly in Greece and Turkey. Shelter, food, sleeping bags, in the winter it was raincoats, Tents, health care, emergency medical treatment. They patrol the shores for the new boats coming in. They give hypothermic blankets when they do. There's a women's centre in Turkey that they run offering medical and psychological support, especially for women, of, for women victims of sexual violence. Centres and offering legal responsibility for 200 unaccompanied minors. Working with local partners, including Praxis and the International Blue Crescent. There's much more, it's a very long list, but the list of what's needed is still greater. We cannot stand idly by the blood of our neighbour. We have to play our part. I'm also privileged to be part of a special United Nations group of faith leaders in Europe responding to the urgent refugee crisis, pledged to speaking out wherever we can against xenophobia and racism and reminding states of their right to protect, their obligation to assist people seeking refuge. This government needs a lot of reminding. <laughs> Refugees are the victims of evil, not the perpetrators of it. A truly humanitarian society would be a place of refuge and all of us here today can pledge to help change hearts and minds here in Britain so that our society would truly welcome and truly give compassion and refuge to all who need it. Thank you.